Okay, this is a tutorial for Ashley from Troy Young's um, Inkscape Facebook page. She wants to make um, this text, I'm an American, and she wants it to be outlined in black, and then she wants the fill to be an American flag. So I'm going to do a quick little tutorial to show how you can do that in Inkscape. I'm going to delete this because we don't need it. Okay, so the first thing I did was I went to Google and Googled American flag drawing. And this is the one that I liked. I chose this one because it's a decent resolution. It could be a lot larger, but this will work okay. Um, and it's only two colors. It doesn't have any outlines or anything. So I'm going to right click on it and say copy image. And go back to my Inkscape document, Control V, to paste it in. Okay. I'm going to hold down the Control key and drag to make it bigger. And now I'm going to trace bitmap. So with it selected, I go to Path, Trace Bitmap. I'm going to use Colors, three scans, and I'm going to actually do two traces on this, and I'll show you why. For the tr first trace, we want Remove Background checked. We don't want Stack Scans checked. We want to smooth it, and then we're going to go to Options and say Smooth Corners, and OK. All right, so there's our first trace. And you can see it did a good job on the stripes. They're nice and smooth. The stars it did a terrible job on. They just look like little blobs. That's why we're tracing it twice. So back on my original image, I'm going to uncheck Smooth Corners on Options and go back to Mode and uncheck Smooth and do the trace again. So here's our second trace. And you can see it did a much better job tracing the stars. This is our original image. We can delete that. <clears throat> now we have to take these two traces apart and put the pieces we want together. So, click on one, Control shift g to ungroup. You can also go to Object, Ungroup. I like to use keyboard shortcuts. Here again, Control shift g Alright, now we can get rid of these stripes because they're all jagged. Delete. And we can get rid of these stars because they're blobby. Delete. And now we just put the two together. I'll get it fairly close and then use the arrow keys on the keyboard to get them where I want them. That looks pretty good. Okay, so there's our flag. Now we're going to type the text. So go on the text tool. I've chosen block letter and I'm going to type in I'm an American. Okay. Now, because we're going to put an offset on these, it's going to make them bigger. I'm going to add a little bit more space in between the letters. So I'm going to go up to this tool right here, which is spacing between letters and pixels. And I'm just going to increase that by clicking on the up arrow. And that looks pretty good. <coughs> All right, now I'm going to... This is just something I do every time I have text and I know it's going into um, design space eventually. I go to path, um, break apart, object, ungroup. Oh, no, first I have to do object to path, sorry. Object to path, break apart, um, ungroup. Now it's got it into individual letters and then path union. So that puts it all back together. So it's object to path, break apart, ungroup, and then union. Okay. And then I'm also going to turn it white. All right. So there's our text. Let's make the flag a little bit bigger by clicking on both parts of it. Since they're still separate, you have to click on both. Hold down the control key and pull. And make it big enough so that it covers your text. Okay. You can click your text and move it around so that the colors are going to be where you want it. We can also squish the flag up by clicking on both parts and just changing the size of it this way. You could even rotate it if you wanted to to make sure it's, you know, the stripes are going where you want them to. So we'll just pretend that that looks the way we want it to look. And now what we're going to do is we're going to both make an offset for this and we're going to slice out the parts that, um, of the flag that we want to be inside the letters. So 
we're going to use path intersection to do that. But I'll show you first if I click my text in the blue and do path intersection. It did what we wanted it to, but it got rid of our text. We still need the text to slice this part and to do the offset. So control Z to undo that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to make a duplicate of that, t of that text. If you press control D, it duplicates the text. See, now there's two copies. Control Z to put it right back on top. So now my duplicate is selected. I'm going to select the blue. Now I'll do path intersection. All right. And you can see if I drag that, it did it. All right. And we're going to do the same thing with the red, but we still need another duplicate copy for the offset. So Control D to duplicate. So now see we have two copies of the text. Control Z. I'm going to select the stripes and do path intersection. Okay. We're almost there. Control Z to put that back. I'm going to make another copy of this, Control D, and I'm going to turn it black so I can see it. Now I'm going to send that behind the white copy of my text. To do An easy way to do that is to press page down on your keyboard, and you can see if I click, my black text is behind my white text. Control Z to put it back. I've got the white one selected now. If I hold down the Alt key and click again, now my black text is selected. I'm going to press 3 on the keyboard to zoom in, the minus key to zoom out just a little, and now I'm going to go to Path, Dynamic Offset. This is I'm still on my black layer, so this is the layer that's behind. I'm going to grab this little node here and pull until I get the size offset that I want. That looks pretty good to me. So click on the selector tool. Um, my black is still selected. I want to select the black and the white. Okay, so now they're both selected. And I'm going to go to Path Difference to subtract the white from the black. And there we go. So here's our parts of the image. We have a black outline. We have this blue part. And we have this red part. Um, so you should be able, if you're going to put this on a shirt or make a decal, cut these different parts and put them back together. So there you go. That's how you do it. I hope that that made sense. Um, let me know if there's anything else you need to know.